From space, it looks like the Earth is tearing itself apart. Three Chinese cities are cracking open, inching wider every single day. Satellite images don't lie. What began as faint lines across the ground are now jagged scars, slicing through streets, farmland, and entire neighborhoods. Houses are split into two, roads drop away into sudden cliffs, farmlands vanish under yawning chasms, and it's not slowing down. Is speeding up. Right now, people are living in places that may not exist tomorrow, because beneath their feet and the ground is moving, and it will not stop. Calm before the break. Not long ago, life in these cities followed the same rhythm it always had. Street vendors set up their stalls before sunrise, filling the air with the smell of steamed buns, grilled skewers, and fresh bread. Children, their backpacks bouncing. Raced each other to school, while bicycles weaved between them. Morning markets bustled with voices, bargaining over vegetables, spices, and fish pulled fresh from the river. From the ground, it was a picture of stability. Nothing unusual, nothing alarming, but far above, from the silent watch of satellites, a different story was taking shape. Images captured over weeks revealed patterns no one on the ground could see. Thin, pale lines began to crisscross the city like faint scratches on stone. They ran through roads, across fields, even under buildings. To the untrained eye, they meant nothing, but to geologists, they were the early signs of something serious. On the ground, there were hints, small ones, that something wasn't quite right. A brick wall leaning just enough for a passerby to notice, a manhole cover that no longer sat flush with the pavement, shifted just a few centimeters out of place, hairline cracks snaking along the edges of roads, widening imperceptibly each day. Most people shrugged them off as the ordinary wear and tear of an old city. Life carried on, the markets stayed full, and the streets stayed busy. No one realized they were walking over a city that was. Piece by piece, pulling itself apart. The signs were there, but they were quiet, too quiet, until the satellites made them impossible to ignore. Disaster in slow motion. The evidence came in black and white. Satellite images taken just weeks apart. In week one, the fractures were thin lines, barely visible against the earth. By week three, they had widened into dark, jagged seams, cutting deep into the fabric of the cities. What once looked like minor imperfections now resembled open wounds, and these wounds were spreading. Entire streets had shifted; roads that were once perfectly straight now curved sharply, bending like warped steel. Sidewalks buckled in waves; buildings tilted at unnatural angles, their foundations sliding in opposite directions. From above, whole neighborhoods looked like puzzle pieces forced apart. Their edges no longer matching. Residents began to see the changes firsthand. Some woke to find their front doors stuck tight, jammed by frames that had twisted overnight. Others noticed windows cracked not from impact, but from the strain of the walls moving beneath them. A farmer walked out to tend his field, only to find a deep trench running through it, too wide to jump, too deep to fill. His land, once a single plot, was now two uneven halves. Scientists who studied the images were alarmed not just by the damage, but by the speed of it. The ground was moving daily, shifting in ways that would normally take years. The pace was accelerating, and no one could predict when or if it would stop. From above, the lines grew longer and darker with every pass of the satellite. On the ground, they tore through homes, roads, and lives with silent, unstoppable force. Human cost. For many, the cracks were more than a warning. They were an eviction notice written by the earth itself. Families were forced to live in the middle of the night, grabbing only what they could carry. Walls had split so wide that daylight poured in through the gaps. 
The sound of shifting foundations echoed like distant thunder. Once the ground began to move, staying was no longer an option. In one village, the road inn had collapsed entirely, isolating dozens of elderly residents. With ambulances unable to pass, neighbors built makeshift stretchers from bamboo poles and blankets. Slowly, they carried people over uneven ground to safety. Each trip was dangerous. The cracks could open further at any moment, but leaving them behind wasn't an option. In the city, schools were hit too. Parents rushed to pull their children from classrooms after parts of the buildings gave way. Desks sat abandoned, papers scattered in rooms where the floor had dropped several centimeters. Teachers stood outside, counting heads, their voices shaking as they told parents not to return. Everywhere, the signs of sudden departure told their own stories. Toys left on beds, photographs still hanging on tilted walls, wedding dresses hanging in closets that had split down the middle. The earth had not just taken buildings, it had taken memories. It's like the earth is swallowing everything we built, one man sat in, staring at the place where his house used to stand. His voice was flat, but his hands trembled. For him and for thousands of others, the cracks were not just in the ground, they were in their lives. Official response. As the fractures grew, the government declared multiple high-risk zones. Entire neighborhoods were ordered to evacuate, with buses and trucks sent to move people to safer areas Temporary shelters sprang up in schools, sports halls, and even unfinished construction sites. Some families refused to leave until the last moment, unwilling to abandon the homes they had spent their lives building. Heavy machinery was rolled in to stabilize slopes, pour concrete into gaps, and shore up weakened roads. In certain areas, huge steel plates were driven into the ground in an attempt to keep it from shifting further. But in several work sites, crews were forced to retreat. New cracks opened beneath their equipment, swallowing fresh asphalt and making repairs impossible. The official explanation was straightforward. Weeks of heavy rainfall had saturated the soil, causing it to loosen and slide. Local leaders repeated this line in press briefings urging calm and promising swift action. But among geologists, there was quiet disagreement. Some pointed to deeper, more dangerous causes. Decades of underground erosion, old mining tunnels, and fault lines weakened over time. To them, the rain was only the trigger, not the cause. For residents, the debate didn't matter. They needed solutions, not arguments. They told us to move, said one woman at a crowded shelter. But where? This is our home. Her words echoed the frustration of thousands. To leave was to lose everything, but to stay could mean losing their lives. Even as evacuation orders expanded, many clung to the hope that the cracks could be stopped. But the ground had made its decision, and it was still moving. The bigger picture. From high above, the satellite images are more than photographs. They are warning sirens. What's happening in these three cities could be a preview of what might come elsewhere. Experts are studying the patterns, mapping the fractures, and comparing them to historic events. In many past cases, the same kind of ground shifts were the precursors to devastating landslides, massive sinkholes, and even the total collapse of entire urban districts. The danger isn't just in the cracks themselves, it's in what they led to. A sudden landslide could bury homes in seconds. A sinkhole could swallow an entire apartment building before anyone can escape. These events have happened before, in other countries, often with little warning. And in many of those cases, satellite imagery had detected early signs, just like it has here. Geologists say the most unsettling part is not knowing what comes next. Will the fractures slow and stabilize with time? Or are they only the first stage of something much larger? Could an entire neighborhood vanish overnight? 
leaving nothing but dust and rubble. No one can say for sure. For now, these images are a lifeline, a way to track the changes day by day. But they are also a reminder of how fragile the ground beneath us can be. From space, it's a pattern of lines. On the ground, it's a pattern of destruction, still unfolding. The crisis isn't frozen in time; it's still unfolding, and the forecast is making things worse. Heavy rain is expected in the coming days, the kind of relentless downpour that can seep deep into the soil, loosening it even further. Experts warn that each drop of water could add weight and pressure to already unstable ground. For residents, this means living with constant fear. Many have moved into community centers, sleeping on thin mats among strangers. Others have gone to stay with relatives, far from the danger zones. But far is a relative word here. Even safe ground feels temporary when the Earth has proven it can shift without warning. The latest satellite comparison is the most chilling yet. In week one, the cracks were thin, pale lines barely visible to the eye. Now, in week four, they are thick, black scars running through the heart of each city. Some stretch for kilometers, crossing rivers, cutting through farmland, and slicing roads clean in half. Authorities repeat the same warning: the cracks are not stopping; they are growing. And as the rain clouds gather, no one knows how fast that growth will be. Three cities, thousands displaced. And a clock no one can see, counting down to an event no one can predict. From above, it looks like nothing more than lines on a map—a strange quirk of geology. But for the people who live there, those lines mark the end of the world they once knew: homes abandoned, streets cut in half, generations of work and memories erased in weeks. The satellites will pass again tonight, capturing new images. Somewhere, a wall will crack, a road will shift, a home will tilt just a little more, and the scars in the earth will deepen. This story is far from over. Subscribe to Doomline because when disaster strikes, we bring you the truth.